What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Paul Row. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Paul Row and What's the Numbers I provided. Today, we're back with another profile piece. This one is on Turf Diamond. In this video, we're going to speak about his early years growing up in Brooklyn. After that, we'll look at his reputation and well-known gang affiliation that traveled with him wherever he went. Then, we'll focus on the details of the crimes that the government accused him of committing before breaking down the outcome of his different cases and where he's currently at today. Turf Diamond, real name Dupree Harris, is from the Bedford Stuyvesant area of Brooklyn. Growing up in and around the Marcy projects would be a little crazy as drugs and guns became a big problem there in the late 80s and early 90s. Turf would make a name for herself in the streets early on and was catching gun cases and hitting Rikers Island as a juvenile. In 1991, he was sentenced to three years for criminal possession of a weapon in the third degree and sent upstate to Collins Correctional Facility where he spent about 14 months before being granted parole in October of 1992. Once released, he returned back to Marcy Projects, but not for long, because about a year later, Turf would be arrested for a murder and sent back to Rikers Island. He would sit up for a while and eventually was able to plead out to a lesser charge that carried four years in jail. He returned upstate to do his time and was granted parole in January of 1997. A free man once again, Turf returned back to Marcy, but this time the feds said he was a member of the Bloods prison gang that had recently spilled out into the streets. Still in his young 20s, Turf now had done some time on Rikers Island and certain upstate prisons. He was more seasoned after being schooled by some older inmates that took a liking to him and was now ready to use everything he learned in the streets of Brooklyn and jail to take his hustling street game to the next level. So Turf, once home and situated, got into drug dealing according to the feds and by the year 2000 had already branched out to different locations beside the projects of New York City. Glen Falls in upstate New York would be one of the spots that Turf opened up shop at, and after strong arming a couple local dealers to get down with the team, he built a nice flow and stream of income for himself. Turf also maintained a strong presence in Brooklyn, although he got money out of town. Some people say he was feared by many in his neighborhood and also had a strong presence in the blood culture that was growing in New York City during that time. Although not charged, local police had fingered Turf as a suspect in a 1999 murder that happened in Best Eye, but that wouldn't come to light till after things hit the fan for him in July 2002, when Turf had to literally run out of a Brooklyn courthouse to avoid arrest. Now eventually the cops would catch up with Turf and arrest him a few months later in December 2002 and charge him with witness tampering. But the story was much deeper than that, because he would also be charged with the 1999 murder in Brooklyn along with federal drug conspiracy charges for his time hustling in Glen Falls, New York. Turf Diamond was set up and in December 2003 started going to trial on his charges. First was the 1999 murder of 23-year-old Clifford Robinson who according to the police Turf fatally shot because Mr. Robinson was pursuing a woman who was involved with a friend of Turf. The prosecution would have issues during the trial with certain witnesses who refused to testify or change their statements on the stand and the doubt caused by the confused witnesses was enough for Turf to secure a not guilty verdict. Round one was over and went in Turf's favor, but he still had two more cases to deal with. Next, in August of 2004 was Turf's trial for bribing witnesses in the murder case his half-brother was charged with. The story the authorities presented was that Turf struck up relationships and bribed three young women who were teenagers at the time to change their testimony in the case against his half-brother. Turf was so notorious within the Brooklyn courthouse when it came to witness tampering or intimidation that the TV show Law & Order built an episode around a character that appeared to be based on him. But all the notoriety that Turf's reputation brung did nothing but get him a 15 year to life sentence after being convicted of bribing three witnesses. Turf might have been home by now if that was the only trial he lost, but unfortunately for him, the federal drug dealing indictment out of Glen Falls would really set him down. Cause after being found guilty in that case, the judge sentenced Turf to 37 years in the feds for running a crack cocaine operation from the year 2000 to 2002. And prison is where Turf been ever since. Although he may be coming to an end of his stay bid as he's eligible and expected to receive parole in the next few years, Turf still has the remaining years of his 37 year federal bid hanging over his head. But laws change all the time federally, so maybe he will see the light of day once again, seeing as he himself isn't convicted of any murders. But yo, it's What's the Numbers TV. There's a quick profile piece on Turf Diamond, real name Dupree Harris. Now, according to the feds, according to the local police, you know, he was a wild boy, they said, posing figure in his neighborhood, 5'10", 240. Supposedly, he had a lot of people scared. 
And um, he was so notorious within the Brooklyn judicial system and the courthouse with the judges and the prosecutors and all that. They got accusations of him of tampering, accusing him of tampering with cases going back to 1993. Now, he got convicted in 04, right? So they're saying for 10, 11 years that he was beating murders. People around him was beating murders all because they was, you know, taking care of witnesses, bribing witnesses, intimidating witnesses, even in some cases killing witnesses. All the things that they police accused turf and you know certain people around them are doing now but we got to point out that when it all came down to it to official convictions he didn't get convicted of no murders you understand people around him got convicted of murder like his half brother and things like that but he himself didn't get convicted of no murders but he still ended up getting 37 years for the drug charge so did the did the um judge railroad him i'm not sure i'll have to go dig a little deeper as far as it's the paperwork because you know a lot of time in the feds you go by to somebody's um record so he had a crazy record, so maybe that would got him 37 years. But, you know, sometimes in the feds, a lot of laws change here and there. They get passed for a year or two, then he might go away. So maybe he has a chance to come home one day. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But he had been fighting since he got locked up as far as putting appeals and different things with a, with a lawyer, trying to get him home. But as of right now, he's still doing the finishing up the state time, and he still got that state bit hanging over his head. Now, as far as Turf Diamond... You know, you got somebody else from Marcy named Danny Diamonds. Now, I don't know if Diamonds is a Marcy thing that, you know, people, uh, different people got Diamond at the end of their name. Even though somebody told me that Turf and, Di and Danny might have been related. So, I don't know. You know, anybody from Marcy in the comments, let it be known if you know if that's just a Marcy thing, the Diamond tag, or was them, they actually related and how they had the symbol of Diamond at the end of their name. Now, like I said, man, that's pretty much the profile piece on, on, on Dupree Harris a.k.a. Turf Diamond, you know what I'm saying? He also tried to say he was a blood leader. His lawyer said he wasn't. He was on the run for a little while. You understand? Like, people know Turf in, in, in Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. So, and he been doing, been, been upstate for the last 10, 15 years. So, you know, Turf Diamond, Marcy, Project Representer, Best Stop Brooklyn. Now, before we get up out there, I just want to let y'all know, make sure y'all go subscribe to the Clips channel. Go follow the Instagram. Need some promo, holla at me. You see the views is going up. We on our way to 100,000. We just said 86K. So, you know, tap in with What's the Numbers TV, man. Especially if you need something promote, promoted. Or if you're just looking for that good content on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and follow on Instagram, man. Other than that, man, it's Polro. Be back before you know it. We out of here, man. Peace.